Alright, you are back with comedian Dave Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So it's confirmed, it's locked in. I will be in Melbourne on the 12th of November for the live recording of the Oppression Chamber's 100th episode. It will be on at 7.30 at the Rubber Chicken. It will go from 7.30 to whenever the fuck we want. There's nothing on after us, so it's just fucking party time after that. It will be stand-up comedy, me, Dor, Izzy. If you came to my festival show, I'll try and eke out a new 15 minutes by the time I fucking get there. So come along, we'll do the stand-up. There might be some special guests. We'll see who wants to come and rock and roll. So the stand-up and then afterwards we'll do the fucking potty. And then after that, it's fucking go time for everyone else besides me. I'm thinking of driving down to Melbourne. Fucking airfares now are ridiculous. They're insane. It was going to cost like $400 to go the dates I wanted to. $400 fucking dollars return for a one hour flight. These fucking airline cartels, they've got you by the balls now. I even looked into the Greyhound bus. Fucking back to the future. We used to catch the old Greyhound bus and the Firefly. It was Firefly and Greyhound. From fucking Melbourne to Sydney to see Dad when we were fucking poor. Well, we're still poor, but flights got cheaper. So we were able to fucking upgrade to a plane. Now, these fucking cunts. The fucking bus costs $87 one way though. And that's 12 hours. I wonder if they play a movie still on that shitty TV up the front. That used to be the only joy of the bus trip. They would play some fucking shit movie and the anticipation before the movie was like, I wonder what they'll play. Do you reckon they'll play Ace Ventura? What about Dumb and Dumber? I hope it's fucking Dumb and Dumber. That'd be so cool. And then we're just sitting there like me and my brother. You can't even see over the fucking chair in front of you. And you're like, all right, the bus driver just put in the video. What is it? What's it going to be? And then it had the warning thing and the copyright thing. And you're like, what the fuck is it? What is it? Come on, fucking be good, be good. And then the fucking title pops up. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. You're like, for fuck's sake. (laughs) Chitty, chitty, bang, bang on the fucking bus. And then you're like, well, fucking, it's better than reading a book or looking out the window. So fucking chitty, chitty, bang, bang it is. And then the movie starts playing and you realize the speaker just above your head's crackly and it doesn't work. So you're really just watching Chitty Chitty Bang Bang with no fucking sound. No sound or subtitles. So you've got to fucking sing the songs in your head. Woo-ee, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, we love you. But the bus is fucked. Fuck the bus. I looked at the train. The train's slightly cheaper and at least you get to chill on the train. You can go for a stroll. You can take a dump in another carriage without walking out the door and staring directly into some cunt's eyes. The train could be a possibility, but I'm fucking not paying $400, $450 to get down to Melbourne in an aeroplane. Fuck that. They're a fucking cartel now. We've only got three domestic airlines in Australia. We've got fucking Jetstar, which is owned by Qantas. We've got Qantas and we've got Virgin. That's it. We did have Tiger, and they were shit, but they were so fucking cheap, it was sweet. But they went bankrupt as soon as the fucking pandemic hit, and then the government bailed the absolute fuck out of Qantas, and now they've jacked their prices, so the fucking people that fucking bailed them out can't even catch flights anymore, you dirty fucks. And the CEO of Qantas, Alan Joyce, is the spindliest little fucking spineless little Irish cunt I've ever seen. I don't know where the fuck they dug up this Irish cunt. He's the weakest little fucking piece of shit I've ever seen. He must have fucking moved away from Ireland fucking early because he would have got the shit kicked out of him. He's a disgrace to the fucking Irish name. Anyway, let's fucking move on to this week's Boyle Breaks History. So, it's all been happening in the news lately. We've got interest rate rises. We've got fucking nukes coming. We've got fucking all sorts of shit. And then the other day, OPEC announced that they're going to cut 2 million barrels per day of oil production. And I'm like, well, that's not going to help. And then I was like, what the fuck is OPEC? 
And then I was like, I think I possibly did a Boyle Breaks history about OPEC about a year and a half ago. But because of the traps of modernity, I only have a memory that lasts either 30 seconds or six months. My long term is six months and my short term is 30 seconds. So we're going to do, probably for the second time, Boyle Breaks history, OPEC. Now, what the fuck is OPEC? OPEC stands for the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. So basically the cunts that export oil. So it was established in 1960, back in the day. The establishing members were Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela. I don't know how Venezuela got over there. I know they have a lot of oil, but fucking which Arab cunt went over there and was like, hey, Ven, we need you. We don't have any translators, but come over. So basically, OPEC was established. Can you guess why? Can you guess why they were established? Let's cut a long story short. It's because they were being fucked, (laughs) completely fucked by big oil. Big oil back in the day were called the Seven Sisters. That's a fucking hot name for a bloodthirsty cartel. So back in the day, the fucking Seven Sisters, Big Oil, were Anglo-Iranian oil company, US controlled, I think British controlled actually. One of the two, who gives a fuck? Royal Dutch Shell, Standard Oil, California, Gulf Oil, Texaco, Standard Oil, New Jersey, SO, whatever the fuck that is, and Standard Oil, New York. These cunts controlled 85% of the world's oil between like the 1940s and 70s and shit. So basically what happened was these countries, the OPEC countries, nationalized their oil, got together and they were like, all right, Let's not get so fucked over anymore. But the problem was at the start, they had no fucking idea what they were doing. And also, they just didn't know how to get the oil out of the ground without these companies. So the companies were still fucking involved, but there was like some split sharing and all that sort of shit. Anyway, don't worry about that. Today, OPEC consists of the countries. It's actually called OPEC Plus. One of the pluses is Russia. So the current members of OPEC are Algeria, Angola, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, some powerhouses there, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Libya, Nigeria, the Congo, the Republic of Congo, I mean, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Venezuela. The countries of Ecuador, Indonesia, Qatar are former members, and they sort of like, are included in the larger group OPEC+. Plus. So these cunts combined control like 40% of the world's oil. And the thing is, demand for oil is pretty much constant. So if demand is pretty much constant, then the only reason you would have price fluctuation would be because of the supply side. So these cunts get together... And they get together and they can sort of like manipulate the price. So during the pandemic, they cut production, which kept the price steady. at sort of like a high price. Like the price of petrol still went down over COVID, but it would have gone down to like one cent if production remained the same as pre-pandemic levels. Everyone was in fucking lockdown. So yeah, they usually don't do too much fucking around with it unless there's like a crisis. And recently, they look like they're trying to fucking like sever ties with the US. Saudi Arabia is like the king of OPEC. Saudi Arabia control like 10% of the world's oil. Russia, who's also part of OPEC Plus, they control 10% of the world's oil as well. So between Saudi Arabia and Russia, that's like 20% of the world's fucking oil. So the US and Saudi Arabia have pretty much had a friendly relationship. What their relationship has been is you supply us with oil and we'll supply you with weapons. That's the deal. (laughs) We'll give you, Saudi Arabia, as many fucking weapons as you like. Well, we'll sell them to you. Just keep the fucking oil coming, all right? We don't really care what you do with the weapons. But the relationship has turned pretty frosty lately. Only just lately it's turned frosty. It didn't turn frosty 
after fucking September 11 for some reason. Just now it's got frosty. That's basically OPEC. That's all you really need to know. OPEC control 40% of the world's supply of oil and they can fuck with it whenever they want and they seem to be a more cohesive unit than they used to be. So they seem to be getting all on the same page. They're a cartel. They're probably the world's biggest cartel. So that's pretty much it. There's nothing left to say. Well, it's not it, but I've completely tapped out my knowledge. I've got no more fucking insight. That's all there is. Anyway, that's Boyle Breaks History for today. That'll do too. Tickets to the Oppression Chamber live podcast will go on sale tomorrow. If you're enjoying the podcast, give it a share around and I'll see you the fuck later.